Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. So, I recently played the open beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now, the only other Ghost Recon game I've ever played is Ghost Recon Future Soldier, so going into Wildlands, I was expecting some relation, some correlation to Future Soldier, and while there is a reference to that game in this game's very opening cutscene, Wildlands is a very, very different beast to Future Soldier, which I personally found to be a bit jarring, and it took me a while to get used to it, to adjust to it. And I'll go into greater detail about that later. For now, this is a review of the open beta. What did I think of it? What are my thoughts on the open beta, on the gameplay of Wildlands? As presented in this beta, did the beta fulfill its purpose, get me excited for the game? How was the technical performance of this beta? Well, how about I stop stalling and actually tell you? The Ghost Ghost Recon Wildlands beta was playable both single player and co-op. This being an open world game, however, you were not granted access to the entirety of the open world. You were only granted access to two of the 21 different provinces that will be available in the full game. You also had access to a limited amount of weapons and equipment, but were granted previews as to the full arsenal of weapons and equipment that you can unlock in the full game. Now, in terms of content that was available in the open beta alone, it was quite significant and quite surprising. Now, I mean this when I say this, but the open beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands almost felt like an entire game all by itself. There was, quite frankly, that much content. Even though you were only granted a small portion of the open world, that small portion was so big, it felt like an entire open world game onto itself. And there were just enough main story missions and side missions available that there was, quite frankly, dozens of hours of content available to you. I honestly have to give huge props to Ubisoft for just providing so much content in the open beta alone. It was really quite generous of them. So, in terms of content, the open beta had a shocking amount of it. Dozens of hours of content. As for the technical side of things, the beta ran pretty well for the most part. I never had any connection issues, never dropped from a match when I was playing co-op, never had problems connecting to other people's games and matches, never had any problems signing into Ubisoft's Uplay servers. As much as we all dread Uplay, Ghost Recon Wildlands, at least the open beta, ran pretty well. In terms of online connections, in terms of technical performance, it was was all right for the most part, but be aware, this being an open world game, it is an inevitability for all open world games to have some technical and performance issues. I did encounter bugs and performance problems while playing the open beta. I experienced severe clipping, props, characters, vehicles, flipping out and flying into the air, clipping and glitching through the environment, random frame rate drops. That was something that was very curious about the open beta, where I would have random frame rate drops and I could never determine what was causing the frame rate drops, whether it was like a special effect, something to do with the graphics. I could not determine what was causing the frame rate drops. And what was probably my biggest grievance, my biggest technical performance grievance of the Wildlands open beta, loading times. Long long-ass loading times. Whether it was loading into the main menu, loading into the open world, fast traveling, or even get this, I've never experienced this with any other game, loading the pause menu. Ghost Recon Wildlands, open beta, is the first and only game where there's ever been loading for trying to get into the pause menu, where I'd hit escape to pause the game, go to the pause menu, and it would take upwards of 10 seconds. The game would just freeze while it loaded the pause menu. I've never experienced that with any game ever. Now, this was an open beta, and technical issues are absolutely expected. So, overall, as an open beta, I think the Ghost Recon Wildlands beta was a successful open beta, a really good beta. While they were numerous technical issues, they never truly got in the way of me actually playing and enjoying the game. They were a hindrance, they were annoyance, but they never full stopped me from playing and enjoying the content in the open beta, and the actual content in the open beta was incredibly generous. So, props to Ubisoft, I think this was another successful open beta on their part. Now, moving on to my actual thoughts on the gameplay 
the story, the open world, the graphics, and just my general thoughts on the taste, the preview, that was given to me for Ghost Recon Wildlands in the open beta. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Ghost Recon Wildlands was an interesting experience for me because it's kind of one of the very few games where I wasn't really enjoying it at first. There was absolutely things I liked about the game and appreciated about the game right off the bat, but it really took a couple hours before I actually start having genuinely lots of fun with the game. Ghost Recon Wildlands is an open world third person tactical shooter with a modern military setting and its plot revolving around ghost recon operatives infiltrating the country of Bolivia and trying to dismantle and take down the fictional Santa Blanca drug cartel. This is a very different story and setting than what I'm used to from Ghost Recon games. Even though I have not played Ghost Recon games before Future Soldier, I was well aware of their settings and plot. And Ghost Recon Wildlands is a real departure from the typical Ghost Recon gameplay setting and style. The game, however, does maintain certain controls and functions found in the previous Ghost Recon games. A typical third-person shooter movement system, being able to walk, sprint, crouch, go prone, mantle and climb over objects in the environment, the game goes for a more realistic time to kill and damage system, whereas you can instantly take out enemies with a headshot and just a couple body shots and they can do the same to you. More realistic modern military third person shooter style. Also returning from previous Ghost Recon games is the ability to switch between aiming down your weapon in the third person or aiming down your weapon in the first person through the iron sights of your weapon. Glad to see that make a return and it's really cool looking in this game, really well done. And it does add a unique feel to the game in the third person shooting switch switching from the typical third person aiming down sights to the first person aiming down sights. And the gunplay the shooting is fun. I'll admit I didn't find it fun at first, it took a while for me to adjust to the controls and get access to new and better weapons and gear and actually level up my character, as Ghost Recon Wildlands does feature an RPG-esque leveling up system, where you earn XP for completing missions and collecting items in your environment. And Oh boy, if you are a collectionist, a completionist in your video games, Ghost Recon Wildlands has you covered. There are so many collectibles. In the open beta alone, it will take days, weeks, maybe even months to 100% complete this game and collect every collectible there is. Now, like I said earlier in the video, the open beta was incredibly generous with content. And this includes the portion of the open world that you are allowed to explore in the open beta. Only two provinces of the 21 that will be available in the full game. And I have to be honest, I gotta admit, the open world alone makes me want to purchase Ghost Recon Wildlands because the open world is so gorgeous, so jam-packed with detail, beautiful art design, really well done cultural referencing, and it's just enormous! It's just enormous! We only had access to two of the 21 provinces! I know I keep repeating myself, but I cannot stress enough how huge, how massive this open world is, and how gorgeous it is, really. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a beautiful looking game, with fantastic lighting, well done detailed textures, gorgeous weather effects such as wind, rain, snow. It really is a gorgeous, beautiful looking game. While I do believe that there are video games already out right now and came out way before Wildlands will, that do look better and do have better visuals, I can't deny the graphical polish and the graphical fidelity presented to us for Ghost Recon Wildlands in the open beta. The only thing of visual quality that I found lacking was the animation, like the facial animations and cutscenes, lip syncing felt a bit off, it looked a bit off, and just animations for all the character models in general. A lot of the animation looks very stiff, very clunky, does not look smooth or natural at all, at least to me. Another thing that has me really attracted and itching to buy Ghost Recon Wildlands via the open beta is its introduction to the story of the game, the world and setting of the game. First off, they did an amazing job replicating Bolivia. As I already said before, it's a gorgeous massive open world. But Ubisoft really went out of their way to detail and immerse you in the culture and the world of Bolivia under the control of the Santa Blanca cartel. The game really goes out of its way to explain to you and share with you life inside and outside a drug cartel. How drug cartels influence religion, pop culture, the morale and attitude of the people, how the drug cartel ships their drugs, 
tortures people, trains their own personal private army. It's really detailed and dark stuff, and if you are into the lore and history of the dark underbelly of crime, Wildlands has got you covered there. Now before I wrap up this video, two final things I want to mention. Two things that I really, really liked about this game, besides the amazing open world and the incredible emphasis on detail on this story and drug cartel filled plot, is the character customization, the character creator, and the actual co-op play. The character creator and character customization in Ghost Recon Wildlands is absolutely stellar. While you don't get a lot of customization for the actual face of your character, you get to customize all the gear, all the clothing, and you are given a huge variety of options. You can truly create your own unique Ghost Recon operative. And you can experiment with all the different clothing, armor, and colors. And I'm a sucker for helmets and masks, and the game has a ton of helmets and masks to choose from. So the game scores brownie points for me alone just for that. And then we have playing Ghost Recon Wildlands in co-op. Now I played the majority of the Ghost Recon Wildlands open beta in co-op. And that, in my opinion, is where Ghost Recon Wildlands shines the most. When you're playing with friends, when you're playing with people, in co-op. It really does feel like this game was built for co-op. This is a co-op game. This is a game where you get together with your buddies in the open world and either just fuck around, just have fun blowing shit up, and drive around like crazy madmen around the open world, or you work together, play through the story missions and the side missions as a team, as a true tactical team. Sharing information with one another, marking out enemies for each other, picking and choosing your targets, and executing a plan. And when a shootout breaks out, running towards each other to revive a downed ally, provide covering fire, and work together to survive an intense, close gunfight. Honestly, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a blast to play in co-op. I wasn't enjoying Ghost Recon Wildlands playing it solo at first, but after I leveled up, unlocked some more gear, and really got used to the mechanics, I grew to appreciate the gunplay and the stealth much more. Granted, however, in my personal opinion, I think the stealth is a step down from previous Ubisoft stealth games. I don't find the stealth as enjoyable, or as smooth or precise as the stealth in Ghost Recon Future Soldier, but I have to admit, eliminating an entire enemy force silently, with silenced headshots from your sniper rifle, assault rifle, and pistol, while working together with your friends in co-op, that is a lot of fun. And I really do appreciate the expert amount of detail put into the weapons and their handling, the gunfire. The shooting does feel satisfying when you feel the weight and power behind your weapon as you blast drug cartel soldiers away and just see spurts of blood erupt from their bodies. So in the end, overall, I really enjoyed Ghost Recon Wildlands. I was skeptical and disappointed at first, but the more I played, and especially when playing with friends in co-op, I really grew to actually really like Ghost Recon Wildlands. And this open beta has done its job. It's really successfully tested the game, gave everyone a taste of what to expect in the full game, and has convinced me enough to pick up Ghost Recon Wildlands eventually sometime down the line very soon. So that was my review of the open beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Did you play the open beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of this video? What do you think of my thoughts, feelings, and opinions? And what are yours? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love reading comments. I get nearly enough comments. Please leave a comment. If you like this video in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps everybody involved with the video. If you hit the like button. If you want to help out and support this video, then please share it on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to help out and support me directly, well, there's always Patreon. Anyways, guys, that's been the video, and I'll see you all later.